Hi, we now want to go through some tools which can be used for written communication. We've covered some before and evaluated some before, but now focusing on really what are some specific tools and in what case are they useful. Starting with word processors. So word processor is used for written text, for typing up words on a screen, essentially. So word processors should be used when you are making something which is mostly written text, not for your more creative tasks, because things like Microsoft Word are not designed for the most attractive tasks. You can add images and add colors, but they're not, you know, gonna be majority images or glossy or a really, really professional. So if you're writing a letter, a word processor would be really good. You'd write a letter for your more serious, formal communications. We don't write letters just to have a laugh. You know, it's usually because you are wanting to apply for a job or resign from a job or complain or to ask for something. So your more formal communications, you might use a template to help you get set up. Um, but if you were writing something longer, like a report, again, you might well use a word processor. So a report tends to be a longer document, which may be much more detailed. So a letter might be one or two sides. A report could be, you know, 50 pages, but mostly text, maybe with some diagrams and images thrown in. Reports would also be quite serious and quite formal, just a lot longer. But if you are wanting to deal with something really, really quickly and distribute it really quickly, you may well use email. So email can send stuff to many, many people. And it's, I've said it's semi-formal. You could say it's formal. You could say it's sometimes informal, but email tends to be for work tasks. You're sending emails, you're being quite relatively formal in how you approach it. You're saying, hi, good morning doing a message or saying goodbye like it's quite a formal structure almost like a letter but not quite as serious in many cases so what you might do is you might send an email to all employees with a report right you writing a report is kind of pointless unless you're going to distribute it to people and you might use email for that purpose another tool we can use for communication is presentation software I'm using it right now I'm using slides to communicate both text and images. So I've got my lovely text and we've got lovely images. Getting very meta with this image. So presentation software is good for your slightly more creative-ish tasks. The idea is usually to be able to deliver information to lots of people at once. So if you have a big display, you could have a PowerPoint up and you can present to lots of people. So slide decks are used to convey information in a little bit more of a relaxed way, but using maybe a greater combination of images and text, although my slide here slightly undermines that message. Um, the next tool to think about is instant messaging, which are things like WhatsApp, um, iMessage, Facebook Messenger, things like this, which are just done over internet really, really quickly, similar to text messages, but a different system. So these are really good in a workplace for quick updates to colleagues, you might not have most of your colleagues' number. You might only be your friends or people you work really closely with. But if you are just wanting to say something really quickly, you may well use WhatsApp or iMessage or whatever it is. So for example, you might message a colleague to let them know a location of a meeting or where your client is or where to find something. So just really quick, sending an email would maybe be a little bit overkill. Obviously sending a letter or report would be stupid. So instant messaging is good, but it's not for most professional maybe, it's not for someone that you don't really know so well, it's for close colleagues usually. And the last um, example I wanna go through are using the web. So that's very vague, by web we mean websites and other web applications. So you could use a website, as most companies now do nowadays, to give public updates, to give information in a very public way. Where anybody can go to your website and you want people to go to your website and they can view details about your company and what you are up to and what you might have on a website which is relatively common are blogs a blog is a an article really on a website and an article might be on your latest product it might be on a new staff member it might be on your latest ad campaign it could be on any aspect of a business but a blog is used to give information in a fairly public way which you are hoping people will be interested in and want to read. And of course, nowadays we have vlogs. So a vlog is a video blog. That's where vlogs come from. Blogs 
predated vlogs by a long way. So blogs are audio and video, and often these are used to be a bit more relatable and target people who are probably less interested in reading long articles. So what you might do is hire a blogger to review your latest product to make it seem more relatable and to target a different audience. The issue with blogs and blogs are they're not the most serious and so you might want to avoid announcing important things via a blog or especially a vlog.